video course on statistics. From basics to advanced subjects. Dr. Yahya El Magazi. Professor Emeritus at Auburn University, Alabama, USA. Former Dean of Science, Technology, Math, Engineering at Ocean County College, New Jersey. A visiting professor at a number of universities including Rowan University, Keene University, and Montclair University, New Jersey, USA. Chapter 1. Introduction to Statistics. Why should you learn statistics? Statistics influence our daily lives and can be a major factor in many things. It can be a major factor in making key decisions, in examining important events, and in understanding complex phenomena. All governments around the world use statistics to measure and analyze key economic performance and activities, population growth, environmental factors, educational progress, and medical care activities. All of these are results of statistical analyses that many people are involved in. Politicians use statistics to obtain people opinion about important issues and to predict the outcome of elections for presidents, governors, and the other elected officials. Uh, politicians use statistics also to inform people about important issues and to perhaps perform some comparative studies or some compar comparative analysis of events and outcomes. Universities and colleges, they use statistics a great deal to measure intelligence learning ability and teacher performance. So as we can see here, uh, there are many organizations that use statistics almost on a daily basis. Uh, most of you are familiar with the, uh, the media organizations, uh, TV shows and uh, the rating. Uh, all of these are results of a statistical analysis to determine the popularity uh, or the survival rate of a TV or radio shows. Uh, no doubt, statistics is a part of our life. And as I always tell my students, if you don't use statistics, then you may become a statistics yourself. So it, it is a subject that we all have to be concerned about, uh, regardless the career that you will take, uh, regardless, regardless which direction in life uh, that you will go to. Uh, it may be uh, useful that we start by defining statistics. Uh, there are many definitions in the literature of statistics. Uh, the American Heritage Dictionary, for example, defines statistics as the mathematics of the collection, uh, organization, and interpretation of numerical data, especially the analysis of population characteristics by inferences from sampling. And you can see that mathematics is a part of the definition of statistics. Uh, if you go to another source, like the Webster Dictionary, it defines statistics as a branch of mathematics uh, dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of masses of numerical data. Uh, even the American Statistical Association, uh, they define statistics as the scientific application of mathematical uh, principles uh, to the collection, uh, uh, analysis, and presentation of numerical data. Uh, as we can see, the common term that is used in most uh, definitions of statistics is mathematics. And mathematics uh, is sometimes the, an, an, a turn-off subject to some students and to some people. Uh, well, uh, without mathematics, uh, statistics will not be in existence. In fact, uh, the reason statistics is considered as one of the most powerful uh, tool uh, that uh, uh, used by many uh, organizations is the mathematical power that is supporting statistics. Uh, however, when we teach statistics, 
uh, we kind of put in uh, mathematics a little bit in the back seat and looking at mathematics from an applied viewpoint. So it's the applied aspect of mathematics that statistics will, will care about. And in that sense, we are not going uh, 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 to cover many mathematical details. Uh, we're rather going to uh, cover the uh, basic mathematics that is used for statistical applications. And uh, later on, we will discuss uh, how to use uh, some software programs to actually uh, perform many statistical analysis uh, that save you a lot of time and effort so that your focus can be on the interpretation of the outputs rather than the details of the analysis. Uh, let me give you a general definition of statistics that will involve many terms that we need to define uh, as a start or as a starting point of this course. Uh, statistics is the science and art of reading, describing, and manipulating data which represent variables so that practical observations about a population can be made uh, from a sample drawn from the population and the guidelines can be established to allow making precise and accurate conclusions about a certain process or system. Uh, you will notice in this definition that there are many important terms that are marked in, in red, as you can see here, uh, that we need to uh, define and understand before we begin any course of statistics or before we start developing some understanding of statistics. Let us take the first part. Statistics is a science and art. Uh, the science aspect in statistics implies the mathematical language, uh, the very powerful mathematical analyses that, uh, that makes statistics the most powerful tool uh, in today's life. So science implies mathematical language and analytical tools required for reading, describing, and analyzing data. But we should not overlook the art aspect or the judgmental aspect, which implies the need for using experience and understanding of the nature of the process in assessing or reading uh, with data and analysis output, or dealing with data or anal and analysis output. Uh, it's very important to understand that in today's uh, 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 information era, with the availability of a great deal of computing power, uh, carrying out the analysis uh, will not be as difficult as it used to be in the past. In fact, you can perform uh, some statistical analysis for perhaps hundreds or thousands of observations uh, in a matter of a few seconds or few minutes. So uh, uh, the focus uh, has to be on the interpretation of the outputs. And that's where the art aspect or the judgmental aspect have to come in place in dealing with the statistical applications. So that is the first part of the definition. If we move on with the definition, uh, the science and art of reading, describing, and manipulating data. We need to stop here and define data. Well, there are three ways to describe what we call numbers as most people would call. The first level is numbers, the second is data, and the third one is statistics. Numbers are just numbers. If you look at the screen here, you will see a, a set of numbers starting with 100, 140, 213, and so on, all the way to 300. And if I ask anyone, what are these numbers? One can make uh, many uh, uh, guesses about what are these numbers, but no one will know. Uh, and that's, these are numbers. That's what we call numbers. Uh, they have no meaning unless they are defined or described to someone 
in some terms. Now, if I tell everyone that these numbers are human weight, uh, as soon as I say that these numbers are human weights, and perhaps add to that in the units of pounds, then people can start looking at these numbers and make more sense out of it. And that is what we call data. So data in practical applications are identified, defined numbers. I can even take this set of numbers and sort them in an ascending order and start seeing things that uh, perhaps will not clear in the first uh, arrangement of, uh, of this data set. I can see that we have more numbers on the heavy uh, weight side, as you can see uh, by the red marked numbers on the, on the screen. So these numbers here uh, represent uh, a heavy weight uh, numbers, uh, which perhaps uh, allow me to have a better description uh, of this data set. Uh, it's a sample of people uh, that happen to be biased to the heavier, to the heavier weight. Uh, uh, the art aspect here is why is that and what caused this data to be like that and that we, we will discuss later on. Uh, the key point here is unless we identify and define the numbers, both by descript, describing the numbers as well as providing units, then the numbers are no data. They become data after this identification. So now that we know that these numbers are human weight, these are now data. Data is the Latin plural of datum. In the United States, it's used as a singular uh, 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 noun. So when we use data uh, in, 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 uh, in many writings, uh, or if you read some technical uh, literature, uh, you may find people, uh, for example, stating uh, that this data is described as follows, or this data represents the following uh, 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 phenomena or the following variable. Uh, in that sense, we are using data as a singular. Uh, in Europe, it's commonly used uh, as a singular, uh, 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 as synonymous with information, uh, but it, it's in essence a plural uh, noun. Uh, so if you see data used as a singular, uh, this is commonly accepted universally. Uh, I'm sure the people that uh, write English for English uh, would be using data as a plural, which is uh, 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 the real meaning of it. Uh, the most accepted meaning of the word data is factual information. And that's very important. Uh, we mentioned the level of numbers going to the level of data. If data means factual information, it simply means that when we collect the data, we have to be very careful. And we have to realize that data should represent facts and credible uh, uh, sources uh, so that it can reflect the actual definition of data, which is factual information. Is there a higher level than data? We started out with numbers. We went to the upper level, which is data. Now, is there another level? Well, data can be too much. Uh, most organizations have to deal with a flood of data on a daily basis. The data can be scattered. They can be all over the place. And the question is how we can read the data. How can we look at a set of data that may consist of 100 uh, observations or a thousand observations and they make any sense out of it. Although the data are defined, although they are identified, but it may be very difficult to analyze or observe or read a large number of data. And that is when we need statistics. So statistics is the third level of describing numbers. Uh, when we go to statistics, we are in essence, taking a set of data and analyzing it and coming up with few measures of the whole set of data. 
uh, as we will say later on, uh, the regardless the amount of data, a hundred or a thousand, we can describe this large quantity of data by simply two or three measures that can describe almost fully the entire set of data. And that's the benefit of the third level. So numbers, which you can consider raw data or data that are not defined, then the second level, which is data, and the third level, which is statistics. Speaking of statistics, and as we will discuss in the next session, the benefits of statistics is commonly twofold. Number one, as I mentioned shortly, to reduce the massive data down to meaningful information. The second purpose of statistics is to detect data abnormality. It's very important that we live in an efficient uh, 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 daily life. If you are in an, in an organization, uh, nobody is going to spend hours and hours looking at a large uh, amount of data. So the way to overcome that is to analyze the data and convert the massive uh, data that you have down to a uh, few measures that can describe the whole data set and can give you uh, the benefits of uh, the data and uh, the purpose of using it. The second uh, purpose of statistics is to detect data abnormality. Uh, so now we have three levels, numbers, data, statistics. As we go from numbers to data to statistics, you will find that the quantity of what you have to deal with will decrease. And at the level of statistics, no matter how large the data that you started with, you're going to be dealing with few measures, maybe four or five numbers that you can easily interpret and understand. Continuing with the definition of statistics, the science and art of reading, describing, and manipulating data which represent variables. We need to stop at variables as a very key or very important term in statistics. Indeed, it is that term that why statistics is in existence. Variability. You can hardly find anything that's constant in life. Constants are measures that exhibit the same values. But most phenomena and most situations in life deal with variables. Variable data, human weight, people income, students' grades, how we look, how we behave, all of these are variables. And because of that, we need statistics. In fact, I can define statistics in one simple sentence as the science of dealing with variability. If variability does not exist, then we don't need statistics. But the fact that variability is life, then statistics is definitely a key aspect of life. You can see variability in everything, even in things that you may think are constant. If you are using ceramic tiles, for example, uh, and buying ceramic tiles, the assumption is that all these tiles are identical in dimensions. The reality is they are not. In fact, if you go in a microscopic level or uh, uh, if, you close, if you look closely at the dimensions of these tiles, they can never be perfectly identical. Anything that human does cannot be constant. Anything that human get involved in will be associated with variability by virtue of the fact that human uh, 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 is variable as well. Moving on with the definition. The science and art of reading, describing, and manipulating data, which represent variables, so that practical observations about a population can be made from a sample. Now we need to stop here, 
because we have two new terms, population and assembled. A population implies a totality of things, or in common words, large things. Uh, a whole college is considered a population of students. Uh, a city is considered a population of people. Uh, populations can be large, very large, can be infinite, or can be finite. Small program, for example, uh, in, in engineering or in agriculture, of five, six hundred students can be considered a finite population. Uh, a factory that has uh, 200 or 300 machines uh, can be considered as a finite population. So uh, how big is a population is a relative issue. Uh, there are finite populations and there are infinite populations. Assembly, on the other hand, implies small number of components. And typically, what we do in order to analyze a population is by taking a symbol from the population. This is a real key issue. Uh, if we uh, observe the election every four years uh, and listen to the forecast and the prediction of the election results, uh, we can see that uh, they give us information that's almost as accurate as what actually happened. Uh, uh, they give us estimates of the election results uh, way ahead of time that turn out to be accurate. That accuracy was not based on uh, surveying the entire population of eligible voters. Indeed, a typical sample that's taken from the entire populations of eligible voters may be about 15, 1,600 uh, people. So you can imagine it's a sample taken from a large population, yet the uh, uh, estimation or the prediction of population results is so accurate. And that is perhaps uh, what we need to uh, uh, realize in taking a sample. A sample has to be representative. A sample has to be a cross-section of the entire uh, population in order to provide us with such an accurate uh, estimation of the entire population. Uh, this particular issue represents a whole chapter uh, of this course that we will discuss later on. Population and symbol.